Hey, what's going on? My name's Al, and we have another ZBrush versus Blender side-by-side -side sculpt. Let's do it. On the left, we have ZBrush. On the right, we got Blender. So as you can see, we're doing Krusty the Clown. And right away, in ZBrush, I use Spotlight to drop in my image plane, and then just a normal image plane over there inside of Blender. So with this approach, you can see I took primitive shapes, get them into the position I need, and then you know I'll remesh or dynamesh, do whatever I need later on in the video. But to make a more interesting video, I change the color. Now in ZBrush, it was as easy as going into spotlight, going to my color picker and grabbing the color from the image. But in Blender, it's pretty frustrating whenever I turn the opacity down on the image map because I have to go into the material, go into the display, like what the what I'll see in the viewport. I drop the color. It was a little more tedious inside of Blender. I'm sure there's a better way. I just know in ZBrush, it was really quick and painless to swap these colors. Not that I needed them at this point, but still, <clears throat> let's take a look what's going on in Blender. Same kind of thing, dropping in all these shapes, all these primitives. One issue that I always have in Blender is when I drop in a primitive, I have to go to object mode, add, and then I add my object. Typically I use a UV sphere, but in ZBrush, I can use the insert mesh brush. From what you all tell me, asset browser is coming and that should be similar to insert mesh brush. I'm super excited. Uh, that will speed up my Blender workflow significantly. So linked above is the playlist to all of my side-by-side -side sculpts. So th if this is your first side-by-side -side sculpt of ZBrush and Blender, be sure you check out my other ones. The other issue inside Blender, not an issue. I just don't quite understand why I have to do it. So let's say I drop in a sphere, then I scale the sphere for that arm, right? It's just a stretched out sphere. But before I can start sculpting on it, I have to apply all the transforms. I don't know why I have to do that, but I do. I think it just like seals the deal, makes me be able to sculpt properly on things. And the problem with that, wouldn't be a problem. In Blender controls, it's just control A, and then, you know, apply all the transforms. But I don't know the hotkey because I'm using industry compatible. It's pretty frustrating for me because I have to go up to my settings, change it to Blender settings, press control A, apply all transforms go back into industry compatible settings Oof, for every shape that I want to do I try to do those in batches so if you know how to do apply all transforms with industry compatible key binds key maps let me know so in ZBrush working on the fingers for the hand in ZBrush I definitely get to do a little bit more uh, finesse sculpting in blender the hand really is just a block out and that's okay building up some forms with the insert insert mesh brush drop in the hair and then we used inflate lob brush clay build up for the hair inside of ZBrush still looking real creepy hopping over to blender I still haven't changed the opacity of that image plane and because it was so frustrating because I have to I have changed the opacity see I disabled opacity that way I can change the color of these spheres and that's the reason why I just wanted to do all that in one step so I have the hair the nose the, the eyes the right colors of spheres that way I can just go grab them because it was such a, a frustrating thing to do all right working on some some green teeth inside a ZBrush. I'm sure I will change the colors eventually. Getting those into position, that was a piece of cake inside a ZBrush using Insert Mesh Brush. I just drop in a sphere, uh, sticks to the surface, and then I can pick my brush depth, pick how far that Insert Mesh goes, and then we're good to go. Eventually, when I get there inside a Blender, it's a little bit more tedious process. I have to drop in a sphere, get it into position. Typically, I'll use uh, like Vertex Snap, but it's still frustrating because then it's just, uh, you know, copy and paste the sphere, scooch it over. I need more control, Blender. All right, enough of me whining. Back in ZBrush, working on the tongue. The tongue just seemed to work a little bit better in ZBrush. There's no reason for that. Uh, I will say that the Krusty the Clown sculpt happened months ago inside of ZBrush. So anytime I do a sculpt for the first time, it's really lots of problem solving. Oh, how am I going to make this bow tie? How am I going to make this collar? And then the second time I do the sculpt, it typically flows a little bit easier. So I think in Blender, I was able to uh, do this more quickly just because I'd really already done it. You know, ZBrush Blender, it's basically the same process. Um, sometimes there's some differences in how you get there. But yeah, the bow tie was a piece of cake in ZBrush as well, uh, even easier inside of Blender, just because I kind of had a game plan as to what I was going to do. Get that basic shape, and from the side view, this character looks real creepy. Um, the mouth shape in particular was one of the toughest shapes uh, for me inside of ZBrush for this sculpt, just it's really funky. It goes at a whole bunch of different angles and you wouldn't think it would be that hard. I think what I should have done is broken, uh, broke this shape into multiple shapes just to nail that, uh, that form a little bit better instead of just using a sphere to try to get it. But I forced it into submission. Sometimes you just gotta do that, man. Something's not working, you know it should work, you know it can work. 
the clay is just fighting you sometimes. So, you know, it's a Dynamesh, it's a Remesh, it's Sculptures Pro just to force it to where you want. That's okay, it'll work. We got it. Eventually, this will start looking much, much better. So you can see on the hand, I did a little bit more sculpting. Some of those details, the creases in the hand, I didn't even bother inside of Blender. So in ZBrush, I think the whole process took me two and a half hours, probably in Blender two hours, something like that. So very, very comparable. <laughs> now, with the mouth inside of Blender, eventually you're gonna see that I actually, on the right-hand side, hop into ZBrush. But the reason for that is I really needed Z Remesher, and Blender doesn't have that unless you pay for the add-on, and I ain't doing that. I ain't about that. So since I have ZBrush, I took the mouth shape. Um, the reason for that is it was just like had these dimples all over the place. Uh, I would remesh, I would use multi-res, all that stuff. I needed cleaner topology. With Z Remesher, I was able to import into ZBrush, get it back into Blender, no problem. Things were good. Over in ZBrush, working on the hair and blender, that was always a fun time. Anytime I can use a snake hook brush is a good day in my book. Using the inflate brush, and then I use the blob brush, I think. Don't forget Shift R to get that voxel grid. That way you have an idea. That's one of the really cool things about, uh, about Blender is Shift R gives you an idea of how large these polygons are going to be, and then Control R to do that remesh function. I wish Dynamesh had something like that. I think it's a cool feature. I also really prefer the snake hook inside a blender. It just feels better. It, it curves differently. It's not the same. It's better. 